This is the Sky RC Q200. It has a lot of similarities to the Hi-Tech X4AC, but it also has a few unique differences that make it a little bit more fun than the Hi-Tech. <laughs> First of all, some of the similarities, they're both 200, mil, uh, 200 watt chargers. This one has four 50 watt channels on it. This one uh, can also do 50 watts on each channel, but it also has two channels that can also output 100 watts per channel. And uh, 100 watts, if you look on here, it tells you the uh, A and B can do 100 each and the C and D can do 50 each. The only downside of this is that it's a maximum of 200. So if you're actually using two channels with 100 watts, the other two, aren't, there's not going to be enough power left to run the other two, and so it'll probably just kind of split the difference. But it can run, it can do just as much as this can, plus it can do a little bit more on two of the, ch two of the four channels. Also, both of these charges have uh, little ports on the side here where you can plug in temperature sensors to uh, measure how hot the batteries are getting. This one has them up here on the front. There's two there, and it has one for each of the... Each of the um, chargers. Now the reason you, you would use a temperature sens sensor is if you're charging batteries you can run the sensor off of there and zip tie it or velcro it to your battery and if the battery gets too hot the charger will see that temperature change and shut down the power uh, from the cables that way it doesn't start trying to charge batteries that are bad for whatever reason. Now if it doesn't have a temperature sensor and you start charging a bad battery it will just keep pushing juice to the battery and as long as the battery keeps taking it it'll keep pushing it. The battery can burst into flames and it'll keep feeding juice to the battery because it's still just taking it and burning it all off. Well if it had a temperature sensor on there the temperature sensor would read that it's getting too hot before it burst into flames and the charger would shut down that channel so that way it doesn't you know, hurt the battery. This high tech charger, it comes with, you know, from high tech, of course. And so I have actually, I burned out this screen here one time and I sent it into high tech. They fixed it, send it back to me. No charge. The only thing I had to pay for was shipping it to them. They fixed it and shipped it back to me for free. This one, I've never had any problems with it yet that I've caused. So and this one, I don't know how the support is actually going to be. Now this one has, when I bought the AC, the AC Plus, it only came with one LiPo balance port and one LiPo or uh, one XT60 connector. This one actually comes with four XT60 connectors and four of the balance boards for LiPo batteries. And then this one doesn't assume that you're gonna use LiPos or that you're even gonna use XT60s. This one assumes both, which is good if you are. I have both of these plugged in, and this one, as soon as you plug it in, turns on. This one, however, it has a power switch back here on the back right here. You flip the switch, and then the uh, screen turns on and it's ready to go. And it gives you this nice warning about being careful when you're charging your batteries. Uh, also, both of these can be run from XT60 connectors that connect into a 12 volt, 12 to 15 volt power source like your car battery. So you can connect these up to your car at the flying field and you know charge your batteries off of your car battery, which is very, very nice. Now another big difference between these two is this one has the kind of the standard screen that a lot of people are used to if you've had chargers in the past. If you can come in here, you can choose, there we go. You can choose balance, push enter, and it comes over here and you can select your amps, you can change your amps up and down, push enter again, and you can change your type of battery, 6S, 5, 4, whatever you're charging. And you hold down the start button and it kicks off and starts charging out of this channel. Then you do the same thing again with these four buttons for channel four. Same thing for one and two, they have their own set of buttons. The Q200 did things a little differently. They gave you four different selections up here for the four different chargers. And you switch through them by pushing the uh, channel ABCD button here. And then these four buttons over here are exactly the same as they are over on the high tech. You can come in here, push enter and it's on uh, balance. You can push enter and you can change your amps on here to whatever you want. And you can push next and you can change your down to three, two, you know, four, whatever you want to do on that. Hold down the start button and it kicks off and starts charging. On this X4AC charger, I got a Bonka 3 cell. This is a 1600. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug it into the uh, XT60 connector and then attach the balance board. And because this is a 1600, I got it on balance already. Push enter, come down here. I'm going to put this at 1.6 because it's 1600. And it is a 3 cell, so I put it on 3 cell. Hold down the enter key. It checks it. And I push enter again and it starts charging and off to the races on that one. Over here on the Q200, I got a 1300 4S battery and I'm going to connect it over here to channel A. 
unplug in the XT60 connector, attach the balance port, and then we need to get on to channel A because I got it plugged into channel A. So I go ahead and I select it around up here, and I got it on balance charge 1.4, but this is a 1.3. So I'm going to change this down to 1.3, and it's a four cell, so I'm going to hold this down. It's checking it, and I confirm it, there it goes. And it's off to the charging races as well. Now it's kind of hard to see in this video, but over here is a little green um, charger battery, and you can kind of see it, I guess. 64%, it gives you a percentage of how far along it is. And just like the other one, you can push the, uh, the left and right buttons and you can go through some of the settings. And if you push the right button, it goes through and shows you the individual cells. And it also gives you a fuel and cell average. And then back to there, push enter and it goes back to the main screen. But it's kind of cool because it gives you, if you don't really, if you're not really familiar <laughs> with LiPo batteries, you can tell this one's 66% charged. On the X4AC with the standard LCD screens that it's using with the numbers, you kind of just have to know what voltage is supposed to go up to and how long it takes to get there from where you are or kind of figure out your own percentages. So what are the things I like better about this charger? Well, I like the fact that it's a little bit smaller in, in physical size and takes up a little less room on my desk. Also, it has two chargers that come out the front and only one out of each side, which makes it a little bit easier for, you know, packing other stuff around it. The other cool thing is it also has its own application. And this app's called Q200. Now, this thing, uh, I read online that it has the capability to connect to the app. And it said online you had to buy a Wi-Fi module like this one. So I spent 20 bucks and I bought this. But then when it came in, I searched around on the box and the box never said anything about the module. So I thought, well, is it really built in? Well, when I, when I got the app downloaded and it said, uh, it looks for the charger and then it finds it and it's called charger and I just touch on this and it starts talking to the charger itself. And up here across the top, it has the four different channels for the four different batteries. Right now it's getting information from the charger and here they are. So right now it's on channel A. Channel A is the one I just set up a little bit ago to start charging. And I just set up another battery, a three cell battery on, on C so we can see what it looks like. So up here it's on channel A, and you can see here it's doing LiPo, 4 cell, it's doing 1.31 amps right now, the voltage is at 15.8, uh, capacity it's put in 96 milliamps, which is kind of like your fuel tank, how big it is and how full it is, and uh, you're about 75% along, which is kind of cool, and then down here it gives you the individual cells and shows you where each of the cells are, and it shows you that they are indeed each charging. Now if I come up here to B where I don't have a LiPo battery plugged in, you can see here it's ready for ready to set one up. So on this, if I have one plugged in, I can come in here, select how many cells it is, like a four cell, and I'm gonna do a balance charge, I push next. And then you can put in here how, how fast you wanna charge it, your amp rate, which in my case, most of mine are 1300 uh, milliamp hour battery, so I choose 1.3. This is only important if you're choosing to discharge, which I'm doing a balance charge. Then you push start and it tries to start up the uh, charger. So that's what it looks like setting it up. But here on channel uh, C, oh, maybe I better cancel this. Come up here to channel C where I have the three cell plugged in. Hopefully it will show three cells. Come on, channel C. There we go. And then here at the bottom you can see it actually has the three cells. They're at 1 or 4.13, 18, and 20. They're a little <laughs> unbalanced at the moment. That's all right, though. Uh, now, one thing that's kind of cool is on here, I can go ahead and I, I can hit stop. And we'll see down here, there you saw the screen change, and it actually stopped charging there. So I'll come in here. It's still on channel C, which is where my battery's plugged in. It's a four cell. I hit next. I'm going to crank this up to 1.3 amps. And I hit start. There's talking to the charger. Oh nice, it says cell error. Oh yeah, because I chose four cell instead of three cell. So it has a little bit of brains there to help you figure it out and get it right. So I put three cell, and again we'll do up to 1.3, and hit start. And there, it's charging. There it goes. I didn't have to give the confirmation screen, or go through the confirmation screen because 
I did it through my cell phone apparently. So anyway, so what's the point of having this on your cell phone when you can be sitting right here looking at it? Well, the cool thing is you can have this sitting in one room and you can go one room over or whatever your Bluetooth range is and be able to select uh, your different batteries and see where they are at and their charging time and their charging you know, process, I guess and then be able to start it back up or stop it if you need to. But the coolest thing is just being able to see without having to get up and go look at it. Now is, is it worth the $20 module that I bought to actually add this to it if I actually had to use this? Uh, probably not, but it is really cool to have it built in because it comes in the Q200. Now if you get the charger that has the two ports or the one port, you probably would have to have this because I think the Bluetooth is kind of a luxury thing that they didn't put in all the chargers. One other reason I like this charger is that it has this USB port up here on the front. It's a 5 volt 2.1 amp output so it should be able to charge your cell phone or your tablet at the flying field and you can charge it directly off your battery without having to use a separate charger inside your uh, cigarette lighter or your whatever you call it <laughs> inside your car. So for the poor guy trying to decide between these two, which one should you go with? Well, I'd almost recommend this one because it's newer and it has a little fancier screen, has the Bluetooth stuff built into it. But the support provided by high tech on this, like I said, was phenomenal. I burnt this out. It was completely my fault. I told them it was my fault. They said, send it in. We'll fix it. I had it back within about two weeks and it was actually better than new. This screen was actually brighter than the other three, but it kind of faded back down. Now they're all the same. You can't tell. This charger has a metal case. This one has the plastic case. This one you can short your battery leads out to it if you have your battery plugged in when you're trying to plug these in, which you should not do. Plug these in first and then plug in your battery. That's, that's how I burnt this out. This one has a plastic case, so you're not gonna short anything out to it. They both have cooling fans. This one kind of comes on for short bursts and, and blows kind of quiet and goes off short bursts and on and off, on and off. This one doesn't come on quite as often, but when it does, it's a little bit louder than the other one. Anyway, this is the QX200, and this is the charger that I'm actually gonna start using most of the time while I'm charging batteries. And like I said, I mostly just like it because it has the, uh, this, all the buttons, it has only, only has the four buttons here to control everything and the one to select them. It also has a USB port up on the front, which I like, and also the Bluetooth app makes it a lot cooler and a lot more fancy. When I'm at the flying field, I can check it from my phone instead of having to go back to my car every time to see how far along the batteries are. Anyway, the Q200 from Sky RC, I think this is a really cool charger. If you have any questions about this or about the high-tech AC, feel free to leave in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.